name is Rob Long, I'm a volunteer here at Hope Chapel I and I. Um, <clears throat> I got the opportunity to speak to you guys today. And first of all, I want to let you guys know that, oh, this few days have been really, really rough. Um, usually when pastor asks me to give a message, I have a few weeks, I'm lucky if I get a month. <laughs> and so it was kind of last minute and um, inside I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm good. But at the same time, um, I love challenges and stuff like that, right? So I said, okay, I'll do it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I had this idea of what God's showing me and whatnot. Um, usually he has it already on my heart before a message even, before I'm even asked to do a message. Um, <clears throat> but I see this small thing that I think he's telling me and whatnot, and I'm going through this whole thing. And it comes, so I think I was told about Thursday night. So Friday, I, I uh, have my concept down, I have some writing and whatnot. And I feel good. And go okay, here, I, I know where I'm going and whatnot. And then um, I'm like, I'm gonna wake up early on Saturday. My wife has some stuff to do. I can sit down and focus, and that didn't happen. <laughs> I sat down, I tried to put things together, and like I'm starting to freak out, right? And I tell myself, you got this, don't worry, God, just don't take care of it, and you'll be fine, and all this other stuff. So usually when I, when I start struggling with my, with my messages, um, I won't stay there forever. You know, I won't, I won't sit there and ponder and ponder and ponder. I, I need to take a break and get my mind off of it um, and let things flow their own way. But nothing happened, right? So I'm like totally freaking out. And um, come today, I'm like, hey, some days at work is like really, really simple and fast. Um, and today is like busy. So I can't sit down, I can't write anything, I can't fix anything, I can't go to nothing. Um, this uh, all night last night, I'm like panicking right inside, I'm like, you got this, you got this, the word. And then and like, at the same time, it's like, you don't have nothing. <laughs> you don't have anything, you can't put it together, whatever. So I set an alarm for 3 o'clock in the morning, tell myself, I'll get up early, um, get to work, I'll get by myself, I'll get some things written down. So I wake up at 3 o'clock, and it's so bad, like I wake up and I feel sick. Like I, I all night is all I can think about in my sleep. And I feel like I want to puke and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Same thing at work, like I'm getting frustrated. Um, our boss bought a lot of a lot of work today, and I go to this um, in my well, I go to the side doors to write some stuff, and there's few guys by me. And when I write, I cannot um, think quietly. I speak when I write or when I'm contemplating things, so I have to go away. Uh, I went to my van, uh, and I couldn't concentrate because the guy next to me, he was um, on his break and he was pounding his sound in his truck. So I went all the way to the back of my warehouse. There's like this little, maybe smaller than this, this little um, area uh, that has all the machines. All I can hear is humming and whatnot. It's super hot. So I'm sitting back there and I'm trying to go through some things. And the same thing, I'm feeling sick, right? So I tell my wife, oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I send a message to pastor. And I said, oh, please pray for me. You know, I know that um, God's going to get me through this. But like, I'm really freaking out. And I'm stressing with this whole thing. And I explained to him, that's kind of crazy because what he sends me basically is um, <clears throat> that you'll be fine, just speak with God, what's in your heart, love God to speak through you, um, keep it simple. And I sat there and I was like, oh, okay God, I guess um, what I'm giving you guys today isn't a message. <laughs> it's more of a testimony, I guess. Uh, and like I said, hopefully you can put it together for me. <laughs> I have a bunch of thoughts and things that I'm going through. Um, and like I said, put it. Um, that's my biggest struggle when I do a message: is how to put it together and how to deliver it um, where it makes sense. Because I already don't make sense. So hopefully you can make sense of it. There is no title right now, but I'm sure by the end of this there will be one. And if you have your own title, go ahead and put your own title. Um, okay, let's see how this goes. So, testimony-wise, uh, we all know about this whole COVID situation thing going on, right? And it's been that the, for all of us, right? It's been very difficult. Um, we've all struggled with it financially, um, spiritually, physically, and whatnot. And <clears throat> like I've had my own share of everyone. And I think for me, it, it was more spiritual. You know, there's a lot of things. Um, that's been going on in my life and my walk and all these things uh, that makes it made it harder. And as much 
as much as I need this this season and what it's doing for a lot of us, right? Um, I also love it because um, when it starts when this first starts to happen and we have to uh, stop church and do all these things. Um, <clears throat> At first I said, oh perfect, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> I'm going to stop um, doing all these things and I'm going to take a break um, and relax from all this stuff. And <clears throat> I love it because it's allowed, it's allowed me to create my relationship with God one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and what I mean by that, right, there's a whole bunch of things that's all well put together. Is Sometimes I can overthink a lot of things. Um, I always, uh, what do you say that, overanalyze, or analyze all the time everything. That's just the kind of person I am. Uh, <clears throat> and that's what I felt like, well, that's what I, I always do and I've been doing. So during this COVID thing, I took my break and I felt like God was doing something or he's still doing something for me, right here. And I said, and I think I shared it in many church one time, you know, like, I'm taking my break, I'm not going to no book readings, <laughs> I'm not going to no meetings, I'm not doing anything, like, I need a break, I'm taking a break. Um, and as much as it sounded bad, there was uh, a reason for it, you know, what I felt like um, was happening for, to me. And I guess I overcomplicate things, and I always do things, and I always analyze extra, I always, uh, what's that, what's that word? Uh, well, I just always double check my walk, I can't figure out the word. I always double check my walk and where I'm going, and what I'm doing, and why I'm, why I'm doing it. And I realized for myself that, and I think for a lot of us, like, this may be offensive, not meant to be, um, if, when, when this first started happening, this COVID thing, yeah. and if you started to struggle in your walk, right, and you wasn't sure where you was going, you had all these things happening, um, I'm pretty sure that you were, already, you were already struggling, you just didn't notice those things. And I say that because there's things I didn't notice in my walk, or uh, that were shown more clear to me when I wasn't allowed in this room anymore, or in this building. I'm not making sense to anybody, like I said, I just went all over the place, but <clears throat> there was something that uh, I, I felt like God revealed to me. It's something he's always been revealing to me to grow and change, and I think he's used this, um, this season as an opportunity to take that thing you need to a different level, and that's always separating myself from um, everybody else, in the sense of um, becoming my own, um, my own man, I guess, my, my walk being my own walk and my relationship being just between me and him and nobody else. <clears throat> so, for a while, well, we come from a family where our, our pastor, our uncle, is, uh, what do you say, the head, right? And uh, we all follow uh, willingly, right? <laughs> we all follow him and we do all these things and um, sometimes, like, it felt like whether there was a comment being made or something inside me, it felt like it was um, because of him, does that make sense, right? Like, sometimes my walk felt like um, it was based off because of him. And it wasn't 100% my own. So that's something that uh, God been, I've been processing with God and, um, I love it because now my relationship, I'm, I'm forced, right, uh, to build it with God. Um, I have no excuse. It's easy <clears throat> for me to look the part, right? It's easy for me to, to read my Bible because I'm supposed to. It's easy for me to go and pray because I'm supposed to. It's easy for me to do all these things because that's what Christians even do. What makes it easier for me, right, is uh, to play the part is I have meetings to attend, right? So I have to make sure that, and every, I'm pretty sure every single one of us on this team at that one point in leadership, we didn't read and we read it because we know we're going to be asked what we read for the week or what we were pondering on. And um, it was things like that, you know, that um, eventually I felt like, um, before COVID and stuff, I felt like 
like I was, my walk wasn't my walk. It was a, um, for the lack of work, a forced walk. Does it make sense, right? Like I'm doing all these things because I have to, and I'm supposed to, and I'm supposed to look like this, and I'm supposed to act like this, and all this other stuff. And in translation to all that, my love um, or the reason you might have got twisted, and I didn't notice that. So during this, God is revealing to me um, how to become my own, how to. Um, build my relationship with him on my own. I realized, <clears throat> I already know how flawed I am, right? But to be able to uh, not have to worry about what uh, pastor's gonna ask me at a meeting, um, to not worry about what I'm gonna teach, or if I gotta preach, or uh, announcements, or whatever it was, to have all those responsibilities taken away, uh, it put me in a place where I had to uh, see where I really stood at God and who I really was and why I did what I did. Make sense to anybody? No? And <clears throat> so like I said, I had this whole struggle with this thing. Um, but at the same time, I loved it because it was real. You know what I mean? There was nobody else controlling nothing, even if they didn't mean to. It was just, it was just me and God. And I could sit there and say, oh, darn it, I didn't read today, and I was supposed to, right? Or be like, oh, I forgot to read yesterday, and then I didn't realize it, and then be like, oh, man. But, but genuinely feel that, um, and see all my flaws, my imperfections, and where I got to work at, what am I doing right, and what am I doing wrong. Um, and like I said, letting it be me. So there's, and the Holy Spirit makes sense. <clears throat> As I'm doing this message thing, and I'm processing it, this, this is, why well, I got a testimony, this is what I'm going through, and um, how I feel like God's changing me. <clears throat> and so I'm praying to God, Lord, give me something, right? Like, I need, I need something. And, like, I'm struggling with it, and I'm, I can't remember what I was doing and who I was talking to. And then whenever I, I go through a message, I always listen to Christian music, yeah? And most, most times, it's Christian rap. But this time, I just throw on some normal Christian music. And um, this one song popped up. And I wasn't listening to it because I'm focusing on other things. And these couple words came on. And it just, and he didn't really know it. But this song spoke, like, huge for me. And it revealed to me a bunch of things. Um, and the word that stuck up was, gotta keep it real simple. Because it all comes down to this love God and love people. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh, you know what I mean? And I was like, they got that one spot like stuck on like, oh God, okay, that's, that's a weird one because I wasn't listening, um, but you said something. Um, and it was loudly clear. So I went back and I checked who the song was by and um, I was reading the words and listening to the song over and over and over for the past couple days. And like always like, yeah, why are you having a repeat and all that sort of stuff? It's like for me it's like, because that's the message. That's what it is for me. And the song is um, by Danny Boki. And it says it's called Love God Love People. I'm just gonna read it. Um, I recommend you check it out. And uh, if you don't know it, or even if you know it, just redo it, sit there and listen to the words and see if there's anything in there for you. And when I listen to the song, and I made me start to think about myself, like I really felt like this guy was thinking about me. <laughs> I was like, oh man. And it says, I've been running in circles, <clears throat> jumping the hurdles, and getting caught in the rush of doing so much. I'm feeling kind of worn out. All this checking the boxes, trying to be flawless, has me spinning my head, catching my breath, too afraid to slow down. I tell myself to keep this up, and I got wants more than just my love. But I've been complicating things. It's just like me to overthink. You gotta keep it real simple. You gotta keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Because it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. We're living in a world that keeps breaking. But if we want to find a way to change it, it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. Oh, this is freedom, the keys to the kingdom, knowing life will be found when love can be loved. Because love is what it's all about. Love is patient, love is kind, rescues hearts and changes lives. 
Love is all we need to make things right. Gotta keep it real simple. And it just goes on out here and there, right? And like obviously I said before, like in the beginning, running circles with Jim and her, this is what it feels like sometimes. I've never felt like that, you know, like that my intentions aren't um, to please nobody, right? My intentions are to please God and try my best, but it felt like sometimes it ended up that way anyway. That inside I still was wondering what someone else was thinking or what they were saying or what my walk looks like through someone else's eyes. Uh, <clears throat> if I was doing something right or doing something wrong, uh, checking the boxes, right? Uh, trying to be flawless, trying to go through everything and make sure I'm doing it right. Uh, even if I'm even if I'm trying to do it right because of God and trying to do things correctly at the same time, still checking out boxes. Um, <clears throat> had me spinning my head, catching my breath, too afraid to slow down. Ever ever, ever, ever felt like that? That you felt like you should be just stopped, slow down a second, that you get too crazy or get all that. There's been a lot of times where I felt like God was telling me, and I don't know if I was right or wrong, where it's time for you to take a break. It's time for you to slow things down, pull away from ministry, um, and realign yourself. But at the same time, it was like, but if I do that, <laughs> um, I don't know where else I stand, what else will happen um, if I'll make mistakes and fall away. So all of a sudden, that is never what you did, right? Um, <clears throat> I tell myself to keep this up, right? Keep going, keep trying, keep striving, keep moving, which is wrong, right? But I keep telling myself that. And that God wants more than just my love. And I know that God just wants my love. But sometimes my insides make my work my love. You know, like I know that God loves me and all he wants me to love him back. Um, and sometimes by um, being better and doing better and putting in work, it makes I feel like I'm giving him more love than, um, more love, right? Uh, which isn't the case. <clears throat> like I said, even though I know, I still do that and overthink it. And I really love the part that says, keep it simple. And that's, like, my pastor sent that message today, and all he said was, um, you know, like, just say what God telling you to say, keep it simple. And I was like, okay, I got it. You know what I mean? Uh, so, um, still nervous, still a little crazy, but coming here with nothing, yeah, there's really nothing here. <laughs> um, coming here with nothing, and uh, knowing that is a very scary thing. And, like I said, like, I woke up this morning and like, I, was, I really felt like I was on cue because sitting there, like, oh my gosh, I'm like panicking and having an anxiety attack. <clears throat> but all day today, like I said, even if I was fine talking stories whenever and I started to think, hey, I work on a message, and I still start thinking about it, I start thinking about the lie and all this stuff, I feel like I'm cute, like, oh my gosh. Um, but I felt better, just not 100% better. Um, where am I? I love the prices, bring everything right back to ground zero. Because it all comes down to this, love God and love people. My ground zero <clears throat> was uh, based off love. I shared this before, right? And you've heard this message from me, from other people, from other pastors, over and over, it's the same thing. Um, but it's something that obviously needs to be said over and over and over. And my ground zero was founded on love. And that's when um, like I said, my wife was going back to church uh, in my own family's church, and I was working and too busy, or so I say, right? Um, <clears throat> and then work came not too busy, and we ended up going to main church with them. And our young adult leader at the time, Mr. Gary, was the one who like brought me in. And the way he brought me in, Mr. Gary is a <clears throat> sorry, Mr. Gary, it's a weirdo, right? Uh, he has his moments and his things. But um, he's a loving guy, and his love is what got me back. He got me back to mini church over and over. Um, got me to church. Got me to find um, fall in love with God again. Go through all that stuff. My ground zero, based off love, um, back in the back across the street when uh, we had church there. I remember uh, having been part of a, a breakdown team. And I hated the breakdown team. And not because it was hard work, you just felt like you're the only one working and everybody else was laughing and talking to the outside and drinking coffee and eating donuts and you were stuck in there <laughs> cleaning up and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, uh, I'm not doing this anymore. So I stopped doing that. And then one day, um, 
I was watching them from outside, watching the guys clean up and do stuff. And I felt like God told me that that's where I was supposed to be. Like, look at those guys being dedicated and working. <clears throat> and that's what I was supposed to be doing. And then, um, Pastor comes in at that moment and says, Hey, do you want us to be a part of ministry and be one? Like, what? <laughs> and this whole thing goes and takes out its own way. Um, but doing that and serving to serve. You know what I mean? Not um, because I have to, not because uh, I'm worried about what people think or look at me as or whatever it is, um, but serving just because I love God. And that's all I want to do. Um, being in, in, in a ministry where nobody wanted to help. Right, um, coming at five o'clock in the morning, setting up things and cleaning and prepping for everybody else to have a good time, um, with no one else there helping, was never a burden. I mean, it was um, it was joy, it was love, um, because the heart was I just want to serve. That's all I want to do. Um, but does it matter? <clears throat> Nothing else matters. That's it. It's just, this is where I belong. Um, sorry. At that time, I wasn't working. Things were going all over the place, firing in any direction. And I remember, I think it was Pastor sharing a story. Um, I hadn't read really the exact story. It was about somebody who went to offering and had nothing to offer. And they were putting their plate on the ground and said, right? And I told God, that I might not have nothing to offer you, but I have you. And that's where, like I said, ground zero is for me. Um, not worrying about anybody else's things or thoughts or where they are, what they're doing, what they're thinking, um, where I'm at, whatever, just serving. Just serving to serve. Um, and building my walk that way. Building my walk in a way where um, I know, right, that God said the first commandment is to love God more than anything else in the world and to love your neighbor just as you love yourself. And taking that and applying that to my wall and making sure that I had to be a nice guy. You know, I had to make sure that I wasn't rude to people. Um, I wasn't saying things I shouldn't say. I should always think about someone else's stuff before my own. And um, it wasn't a hard thing to do because I guess God created me that way anyway. And it was easy for me to love people that way. Um, but I guess throughout the years, right, uh, things change. It's not the same. So let's say going back to um, Ground Zero. Um, so I guess they had the same name of the song. Um, I love God, I love people. And I just wanted to talk about that. You know, I didn't want to break down anything. I just wanted to uh, give you something that you can think about, um, that you can take home and write and listen to the song over and over and search and see what God has for you. And um, so I have a few things and then we'll be done. Uh, what does love mean to you? Okay, break that down. I think this is homework. What does love mean to you in your own words? Not the definition or whatever. What it means to you to love someone. For me, to love someone, in my normal way, is to take care of them, to help them, um, to put uh, them before me. But I had this thing with the youth. Um, some of them might remember there's a story, I don't remember where it originates from, and it's a story called The Half Cookie Guy. And um, it, well, I guess it originates from my own stuff. <laughs> but I remember that I was a kid uh, that if I ever had a cookie or something to share with somebody else, um, I remember breaking it in half. I was the first thing you do. You look at which is the bigger piece, right? <laughs> I didn't want to get the bigger piece. So as a kid, what I used to do was because I knew um, that I was supposed to be better, right? I was supposed to be a nice person, um, that I always made a thing to give the person the bigger half of everything I had. Um, so like I said, that was like the half cookie guy. So that's like my way of love, is I'll give you more than I have my own stuff. And uh, <clears throat> the second thing I want you to write down is what is the actual definition of love? What I want you to do with both of these things is just check out the differences um, between your, your, your thoughts and the definition of love. Um, your thoughts aren't wrong, I just want you to process those things. Um, another thing I want, I want you guys to start to write down 
is right time, right down time in your life where love was shown, um, given, or victorious. Um, like I said, for mine it was like Mr. Guy. You know what I mean? The things that he did. Uh, Mr. Guy was like I said, the half cookie guy. He would give you the shirt on his back and do whatever you have to do to make sure you were okay and you were good. Uh, Okay. And then I also want you to write down write down times when you feel like in life love has seemed to fail you. And I want you to take those two again and search in in, in that and find those times where you felt like love has fit has failed you to see if love actually succeeded in that. Um, an easy example where right? because the way I, I love is giving people stuff or giving them more than I have and caring about them and all that other stuff. So it's easy for me to do that, but at the same time, the hard part is when you don't return the favor or you, or you step on it in a certain way, then like my brain just shuts off and then there's no more love and there's just um, a problem. <laughs> and that's how I always I am all the time. And it's something I would fix on, uh, work on. <clears throat> and, yeah. So when you write that down, you see that. And like I said, there's no right or wrong answers. Uh, this is all just about the process. <clears throat> um, I think that's pretty much <laughs> everything. Um, There's something I wanted to share that's not 100% on this topic, but I thought was pretty cool. My wife does this hair thing, <clears throat> and it's cool because she loves it, she enjoys all this stuff, and they get kind of crazy, right? They, they're like super girly, and they're all turning each other on, and it's cool, I mean, has its own thing. And they had this big thing this weekend, where it was supposed to be a, a yearly conference thing for their business, and you, you can get a trip and all that other stuff for it. But obviously we couldn't have it because of what we're going through. So I did a live. And it's a crazy live thing. And there's so much stuff on there that I was seeing that I wanted to show the law. I just thought it was nuts, you know what I mean? And um, anyways, they have a bunch of people that believe in God in that whole thing. And they share the, where they come from, the things they do, what they believe, and all this stuff. They have um, this morning she showed me a pastor. My other, I was trying to get dressed and my hair is all crazy, it's still crazy. And um, she's like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to do my hair. She's like, just leave it like that. I go, what? She's like, look at this pastor guy. He spoke to everybody on the survey and showed me, show me his hair. Like, yeah, he's old and his hair's already plus up already. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Anyways, I have stuff. I'm going to share something before I go that I thought was pretty cool. And I think it was um, perfect for what I'm going through right now, what you might be going through. And I might say it wrong, but I say it the best. Um, I read my own writing. A time in waiting, right? Or if you're in a time of waiting, it doesn't have to be a time wasted. Does it make sense or not? And for me, it's spoke a lot, you know, especially what I'm going through. It's easy for me to say, well, church isn't happening. Things aren't working. And I'm waiting for God to do this. And I'm waiting for God to do that. And I can sit there and wait. But at the same time, that the guy said, like, just because you're waiting doesn't mean that time got to be wasted. Um, and that's why I love it, because I love the fact that um, what I'm going through, I can still sit and process, I can still see where I stand, what God has for me, what He's doing through me, what I gotta fix, what I gotta change, where I gotta go, you know, other stuff. Instead of just saying, oh God, I'm struggling, and I know you're gonna do good, and I know you're gonna fix it, um, God, just wait here, right? And so hopefully this all makes sense. <laughs> hopefully put together um, something of a uh, testimony, like I said. With that being said, just by your hands and close your eyes. Father God, Lord, just thank you and praise you, Father, for bringing everybody here, Father God, Lord.